the accused are unknown people so let's not jump let's, okay. let's not jump the Fair gun enough. and even if they, they are shiv sainiks or otherwise there is a law enforcing agency in place to deal with it if someone has broken the law, the law enforcing agency can deal with okay. it. Okay. So he'll say that then Nirmala Sitharaman. So he'll go ahead briefly, then Nirmala. So he'll. Vishnu, I think, I think Rahul has made a very important point. On that evening, a UFO was spotted above Palghar, which allowed 27 aliens to descend onto planet Earth. They were the people who created the rioting and the vandalizing. They didn't belong to the ship Sena. And those aliens have since fled, which is why the police call them unknown. I mean, how bizarre is this? I mean, look at the indefensible being defended with such vigor. It is not about the Shiv Sena. It is not about any political party. It is about the manner in which laws in this country are interpreted and everyone at the cost of the many the for the benefit of a few. That's the reality. Okay. I'm telling you, it's, they are unknown people according to you. They are unknown human beings or aliens or whatever. So I am only going by what Shiv Sena's representative on this All right, Rahul, go ahead. People Rahul. like you is that you all don't read the facts. You all have no idea about what the facts are. But you all like to put your opinion. Why don't you go and have a look at the FIR? Why don't you we go don't and have the any idea. record? Why, do you, why should one believe Indeed. your fantasies the and FIR your... Is, uh, uh, the FIR is written by a police that is scared of you and your hooliganism. Mr. Navikar, if you want Where to know the go? facts, here this are the is, facts. This is the latest the level. This is, this is something I've just realized. Who is that the Mumbai police by politics of your dispensation. Of the and if that's the case, I think the government should step okay, down. Not the Mumbai police. Okay, hang on a second. Nirmala Sitaraman, go ahead. Correct. Nirmala and Sitaraman, go ahead. Come in, Vishnu. It just doesn't seem to. I find this debate really not asking the questions to the people who you should ask the questions to. Okay. The Maharashtra government and its police should be asked as to how they went ahead with invoking a law Correct. and then arresting people. And then today the Supreme Court is asking the very same questions which I am trying to ask. Whereas we have uh, no representative from the Congress and I am presuming whoever is talking on behalf of the Congress is not Maharashtra government's representatives. Why are we not asking? of the government of Maharashtra as to how the police could invoke sections which were not even first of all relevant and then also to see how this act is being defended by the uh, union minister. Now I am coming to talking. Earlier I did not even mention the name of a party or any particular government but now I am doing it because even when there was an earlier attempt to control social media, you had the minister coming up with several different aspects which were not even relevant at that time. You find the Google telling us that the maximum number of requests to contain uh, and also to censor uh, is coming from India. And on what issues you have uh, uh, descriptions being picked up on blasphemy, on um, you know any other things which the government is interpreting, uh, interpreting as harmful. Here the Maharashtra government should have really been represented to tell us as to why. I am for a minute not worried as to who are the perpetrators of the violence. I am not talking about that. But the sections which are being invoked, the police which took the action is not even represented here. Or well, we've got San, we've got Sanjay Jha in a sense. He speaks for the, law, for the, the Congress. Which are, Sanjay, minute, that's an important finish. point I'm, that I'm she sure made. You're not going to come back to me. Just one minute. Yeah. Just one yeah, minute. Right. Let me just finish with this sentence. That the, there, were, there is a need for us to look at the way laws are getting passed laws are getting framed and therefore it is important for us to talk about that for even a minute. Okay, fair enough. Whereas we uh, immediately have a rebuttal saying, oh, uh, we don't need to hold an apology like okay. the BJP does. But I think it is important to talk about the larger interests also when yeah, making and, and, the Yeah, and that's it. in fact what I'm going to do uh, in terms of some of those larger interests that you're talking about and perhaps Sanjay Jha can get into this. The government's intention over here, the government says, that look, it's well-meaning and there needs to be protection against stalkers, there needs to be protection against harmful abusive language. The problem is not the law per se, but the, the intention per se, but the spirit in which the law is being looked at. But some of the, no, what the law is trying to do is good right. over here. But realistically, how does anyone tackle that? I mean, you can, you can create a Twitter handle, abuse somebody uh, harmfully and then disappear. That's what the law is trying to fix. It's just unable to do that because it sounds vague. 
Uh, Vishnu, let me tell you. Firstly, uh, on, to answer the political question, all political parties were represented in the standing committee when the IT Act was passed. Now, once again, if you look at what Kapil Sibyl Correct. has been repeatedly stating and all, all spokespeople of the government has been saying that he has been meeting members of the civil society. He's been talking to the media. You know, end of day, there has been a very free and frank debate. You know, there isn't, you know, what is a law after all? A law is end of day is a subject of interpretation, which is why he made a very critical observation and has suggested because if you think about it in a very practical sense, an ordinary sub-inspector who perhaps doesn't even read English properly is not, going to, is not expected to know a complex thing about multiple acts that are prevalent in the country. Now he gets guided by whatever is told to him, even by somebody who may not be fully aware of the implications. In fact, Sanjay, it wasn't all that complex in Palgar, but so carry that on. Is yeah. why it no, no, it, it is, it is. <laughs> and, and you know, there is an open regret. I mean, there has been an, a complete expression of regret by all that the arrest of these people for the Facebook posts is definitely very exaggerated. All right, wrong, last, last question to Suhail but says, we are running out of time. The essential point of the argument. No, Vishnu, you need a regulation in social media. We cannot ignore I, that. It I, is I, a reality We, we need a regulation, time. but and that's just the point, Sanjay. Article 19 of the Constitution puts some degree of embargo on freedom. Okay. It All right, comes so with a responsibility, Vishnu. Okay. So here, let's, I'm just going to read out a couple of sentences of the act itself and you, and you tell me why, why this is so terribly wrong. Any person who sends by computer resources any information that is grossly offensive or has a menacing character, we both agree that that shouldn't happen, or any information which he knows to be false, but for the purpose of causing annoyance, inconvenience, danger, obstruction, insult, shall be punishable with imprisonment which could go up to three years. Th this is laudable in a sense. It's implementation that we are talking about, Suhail. Isn't that right? No, but, but can I tell you, I want to use two examples from fine English. Number one, the person who wrote this should be shot for inaccurate, grammatically incorrect English. B, you have to be Alice in Wonderland to understand what the hell this means. You know, the realities are we create laws by borrowing them from the entire world and then we can't understand them. I mean, you would need to be a professor of English at Trinity College to be able to decipher what the hell these guys are saying. I mean, so do you blame the policeman in Palghar? It, no, is, it is bizarre that we have laws which instead of solving problems for the common man, compound them further because A, they can't be understood. B, they can be misconstrued to suit anyone's purpose. And that is the moot point. But it all, of the, the all of the words and here, the implementation Suhail, all of the words here, Suhail, can also be interpreted to be something terribly bad. For example, an online stalker can be a menacing character. I take the point you're mentioning about language. But let's, let's look at what it's supposed to mean. Menacing character, potentially a stalker. Purpose of yeah, causing but, annoyance. But, but by right. But by that, a, a person who might be online. But I could be annoyed. I could be annoyed if you send me a direct mess. One minute. I could be annoyed if Vishnu Shom sends me a Vishnu. direct message on my Twitter handle at 5:20 a.m. I could be really annoyed. I could be annoyed if you think I've lost only 10 kilos when Vishnu. I've actually lost 12. How do you define annoyance? That, what that, do you mean yeah. by menacing character? Yeah. I don't find most people in politics menacing. I mean, Vishnu, Lalit Bhanot Vishnu, is so clean is that he's now been re-elected to the Indian. All right, okay, okay. Now, now, now so you're talking about that. Is it menacing? All right, Rahul Navrekar, last word to you. Uh, same question, in no, fact, no, that I asked to him. Vishnu, Vishnu, the difference on social Hang on a second, Rahul Navrekar, go ahead. And that is what causes the most serious damage. A lot of people say that no, this no, law no. is, in fact, meant to target all of the wrong things that we all know are going on in the internet. Why then are we having this debate at all? Rahul? Well, see, like I've told you earlier, this law is not just prevalent in India. This, this, this internet law is prevalent in most of the countries around the world. But now the point is, every law has its advantages and its disadvantages. The same law has also been beneficial for the security of this country as well. So, you, the implementation, like I've said it earlier, the implementation is the problem. You need to not give discretionary powers to any individual organization or authority. You need to have a procedure laid down for its implementation, especially the penal provisions of this law. So I think if we can work on that aspect, I don't really see any major problem with this law. This law can work smoothly and it can certainly work for the benefit of the people if it's implemented in its right spirit and in its right form. 
All right, well, we're running short on time. Thank you all very much for joining us. Important questions uh, which really need to be answered because this is uh, the internet is here to stay. It depends on how we're going to tackle it. And Suhail, if I've caused you any annoyance on your Twitter handle, then don't please sue me. Thank you all very much for joining us with that. We're going to quickly move on now to our next big focus on India Decides. The two editors of Z News charged with trying to extort 100 crores from the Jindal Group have been sent to Tihar jail for 14 days. The police continue to put pressure on Z News boss Subhash Chandra to join the probe. The group continues to defend its journalists and insist that Z are the victims here, not the Jindal Group. ZTV Group editor Sudhir Chaudhary, one of the Hindi News World's top anchors and editors, and Z Group's business head Samira Luwalia sent to Tihar jail for 14 days. The two have already spent two days in police custody. The bail application for the two Z editors will come up in the court on Saturday. The crime branch says they will oppose it. However, the Z network says that this is part of perhaps a larger conspiracy to malign Z network by the Jindal group. The two editors have been arrested on charges of extortion, conspiracy and cheating, all non-mailable offences. On the complaint by Congress MP and businessman Naveen Jindal. The Delhi police is now banking on Z Network's top boss Subhash Chandra joining the investigation. Crime branch sources tell NDTV they would like to confront Chandra with the two editors on the same table in order to piece together the conspiracy and also establish the possible role of other officials. The police say after Sudhir Chaudhary and Samira Luwalia had the meeting with Jindal's team, Subhash Chandra also had a 280 second phone conversation with Jindal's representatives. The police told the court on Tuesday that Z constantly reported about Jindal being favoured in coal block allocations and stopped adding the news items in between, but resumed it when they saw no money coming. But Z said Jindal put pressure on them and not a single paisa was exchanged. The police say Z's version of the auditor's report on coal was concocted and that gave them leverage to negotiate with Jindal Group. Z denied it, saying that journalists wanted to see how far Jindal would go. The police said Z journalists approached Jindal's aid, but Z said it was Jindal who wanted to meet them. Naveen Jindal had released this footage from CCTVs and camera hidden in watches and buttons. His allegation, the ZTV journalists were trying to extort 100 crores in form of ad revenues for the network 